afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome, welcome to another exciting and everything amazing propaganda cast from your host, Imperial Dane, the one, the only master of propaganda, the only sanctioned source of company ears to entertainment. Off here to one Mrs. One own the ever relatable Hlotny Fatima. In the West, it is Bullock fighting for Germany, Deutschland, Das Vaterland. Taking on the role here of the Second Panzer Division versus Nice, it is von Ivan fighting for King Country, the Commonwealth, King George V. Taking on the role here of the 7th Armored Division, the Desert Rats, we got Commandos versus Lightning Wall with a double grenade start there for Bullard and a double section start for von Ivan. As always, please remember to like, subscribe, and share, and press that bell button. So, more likely to get those video updates and others also as well. So, that would be appreciated. We've got a third section away there for von Ivan. We got grenades there on the way for Bullard. Slow approach there so far. Interesting to worth note, he's not really rushing for the north side usually here, which is what you want to do. In particular with the Wehrmacht, since the opponent rushing the northern house here. You're usually in a bit of a tough spot. In this case, he's lucky for now he's doing that. Obviously, the British players, on average, are less likely to do that, but even then, some might do it. And if somebody finds himself in that spot, it could throw off Bullard's early game. But in this case, again, for now himself taking more conservative opening, won't be meeting pressuring and leaving Bullard feeling sad about it. So I guess that's nice for him. We got Sam Max up the calf point and the munitions point, fuel point secured. Bit of grabbing points up north as well. Lots of grenades there for Bullat so far. We're probably seeing a lot of G forty fleets for them. Beyond that we'll have to secure what transpires, what plots are brewing. In the heads of Bullat and Van Ivan. What webs do they weave? Northern point is secured by the grenadiers, so German infantrymen. The Grenadiers basically became Grenadiers after the losses of 1942 as sort of a morale booster to get the sort of a slightly nicer time. Before that was just known as Infanterie and Panzer Grenadiers were known as Schutzen. So they basically became Grenadiers and Panzer Grenadiers. Little fun fact there. Bickers on the way there for Van Even. Grenadiers popping in here, section having up there. Back here, Vickers almost done. Bullard with a lot of infantry. Might be going for Snobby here versus Fanarin as well with his infantry sections. Sarpus there, Gunnadies versus sections. Going in aggressive for the fuel point there. Oh, doesn't quite, doesn't quite. Very quiet here so far. Fanarin is setting up, I think, for some bigger pushes, but at the same time, he's not rushing any meat into it either. Might be waiting for the Vickers machine and do some of the heavy lifting here versus Bullard. And there you go, Bullard going for the sniper. D sharp shoots it. There we go, Fanarin strikes. As soon as the Vickers move into car the uh, center and the car front, uh, I think specifically, he then takes the infantry away there. But at the same time, being held up with Grenadiers. Other section is making some progress, but even then, it's not making as fast progress as it could. Down south, here, section does the Grenadiers. Vickers setting up here as well, but all should be able to hit. There we go, catching the Grenadiers in a very nasty spot. That's going to force an retreat here. North here, the assault, I think, has completely petered out there. Fanarin was unable to build up sufficient momentum, really break through Bullard there. So that worked out nicely for Bullard in the end. Since Fanarin ended up exerting efforts, but not really making much progress. Now, in fact, has left himself slightly open here for Bullard to make progress instead to push in from the north towards the center south. And we got take it there for Fanarin. We got the platoon command post going up. Vickers still is ready for a northern assault. For now, of course, he's seeing through Bullard as if though he's made of very transparent cloth. Slamming up and there you go, quick hit there. And Vickers machine gun to drop stead. And it is there, I believe, building a bunker back at the base. Yes, indeed. It could do with some extra men to do the work. Pony is pushing up, going into a section. We got bolted section there for Fanavan, so increasing their well, overall numbers, thusly, firepower durability. A very potent type of upgrade, which is, I suppose, why increasingly the Relic is just handing it out to the other factions via other means as well. Sampers for Fun Ivan. Vic is there on watch still. Snap is going to move and get another kill here. Fun Ivan's going to, have to pull back that machine gun crew soon. I'm guessing he's going to try and rush out an AC to counter the sniper, since the AC, I believe, does have some nice opportunities versus the sniper, of course. He might try and look for other opportunities. For now, could also go for sniper of his own to try and catch Bullard sniper and then put him, you know, five feet below. But uh, he may also decide not to do that. We got Bullard with take done. Can go for like machine guns, but I'm kind of thinking with Lightning War, he's going to go for the Jaeger infantry package. 
Second moving further northwards. Quite near being seized. All quiet so far. Grain points here and there. Snipers moving out. Four kills so far. Nice kill there on the section. Going for the fuel point in at the sandbags on the way setting it up. Clever little trick in there. Because that for fun, I'm getting very sort of sure to say much more quiet fight. It's less uh, intense, or at least fran frantically intense. But then again, that can always happen. But certainly, you'd usually expect like the first 10 minutes at least to have a bit more action going on. But uh, there's a lot more quiet maneuvering going on between Bullard and Fnab in here. Neither player really committing to any sort of massive rapid pushes. Bull up with Telemines, definitely expecting uh, Fnab to hit him with an AC Mark 3 and certainly if he can catch the AC with a Telemine that would be a huge tactical win there for Bullard and could really throw off uh, Fnab's game. Pani's in trouble of the section, Snab with the Lance of Great Hit there, 6 kills so far and the Snab is already quickly on the path towards having earned himself in versus Fnab. Fnab got a bit of uh, power technical supplies ready as well, back here we got the AC Mark 3 requisition, he's not far off from being able to call it in. Gonna use the G for the Fusion game, the Vickers Machine Go Crew. It's a negative cover though, versus the Grenadiers. Heavy, I mean, that's pretty much one for the Grenadiers. In with the section flanking in, the Vickers is gonna have to retreat here. And they're also prone to an angle where the Grenadiers should be able to clear out the section, think up close with the G for the Fuse to get the Earthlight and Fiatic. And he's still slowly winning the engagement of the section up close. Then again, maybe not. Ends up retreating. Was a close one there, but not close enough. Honestly, I think you should just switch over to the section as soon as the Vickers was about to retreat instead of keeping firing it, hoping to wipe it out. Pack 40 on the way there for Blood. Panzer Abbek can on a Fiatic. He's obviously again expecting that AC Mark 3 from Von Armin, and of course, it's not just going to rely on a single Telemine to do the job. But a Telemine never hurts on top of some anti tank guns. You could, of course, also consider 2 to to counter the AC Mark 3, but that's a much bigger investment, and some players, plus, requires a lot more management, and some players aren't quite keen on A, having to make a big resource investment, and then, of course, have to manage it a lot. So the pack forward in this case tends to be, a, so say, a very conservative, but also much more straightforward pick to help deal with any British vehicles and armoured cars. So far, though, Van Armin is not quite committing to it. In fact, he's not really committing to much, except more troops to shoot at the Germans with. Not far off here from a commando glide insertion, could in fact be what Fanana is setting up for here. Combined with some smoke raid operations or assaults could definitely give the uh, pull out a bit of a hard time. Because of Port Assault here in Fanavans or Bulat's northern positions, Panzer gonna be on the way there for Fanivan. For Bulat, damn it, I keep messing up for some reason. Which is a bit awkward there. You go AC Mark 3 for Fnaven. But Lance Panzer going to be slowing the way here to support the second Panzer de Shawn in more offensive action versus the Tommies. Section sealing up. Getting ready for the next pick push. Snow moving in there. Nine kills. Cutting off Fnaven's resource and slowing down his economy. Very good there, obviously. More going to for G for the Freeze. And there you go. Panzer going to be scored out as well there for Bulat and for Deutschland. Mines laying up there for Van Even. Very good. AC Mark 3 about done. Section turning out. Enemy causing trouble. Trying to take one of our points. And it's into the section. We got the AC Mark 3 setting out. Sabbath moving in as well. Charging at the Grenadiers. Up north here we got Panzer Grenadiers sitting forward there for Bullard. Let's see what Fnaven does for that armoured car here versus Bulat, how he shall manoeuvre it, how he shall get it close to, to Bulat. And there you go, we get the commandos, light insertion versus those damnable hands. Swooping through the skies like a great big paper eagle. AC Mark III striking up north, landing. Uh, that was a mine actually going off there. Looked like it killed something, but it didn't. Gliders, there we go, landing in as well. Wing explodes or fragments. <coughs> Season the south there. A few pioneers sneak about. They're trying to avoid Van Ivan's main force. Good pick there. Commando signing up behind the fence. We'll see what Van Ivan does with them. We'll upgrade with Bren guns. What will he do? 
Still having control of both fuel points is pretty good here for Fanon versus Bulat, so it means he might have a chance of pushing ahead. Though Bulat certainly could also be taking out and push Ramen. Though he's instead going for more Panzer Grenadiers, which put him at, well, two squads of them. Definitely a lot of Panzer Grenadiers versus Van Ivan. Big section push as well. Putting a lot of pressure on Bulat, who is now slowly being pushed back towards his base here by Van Ivan. Commander's also moving out there, there's certain guns going off. And there goes Salt Rebel Panzer there. Could have tried to bomb grenades that they're going to treat now. I think if they try to pop a grenade, they get wiped out. And even then, there's a tiny chance they still get annihilated. There go Attila Call in the treat path as well. Trying to sort of get increased chance of wiping out, but also just pretty much force Bulat to retreat or risk losing units. Other Panzers were going up, catching the section up close. I think Bulat here might have to consider attacking from another angle instead of just charging straight here to Ivan. Because right now, Fun has got a lot of guns they could make. The lives of Bulat's infantry very miserable. In fact, I think right now a good idea for Bulat is to just hit for the southern fuel point, outmaneuver him for now, and then sort of try either to swing from the south up behind Fanon's northern position, or just then attack head on, depending on how Fanon reacts. Uh, no, nope, so far though, Bulat continues to the frontal assault here against Fanon. He is stubborn, determined not to concede one ground of sacred German territory to the damnable British. Commanders doing when they can get a light gun bomb off there, but they're taking heavy damage in the process. It's because they could actually get wiped out. So it looks like it did pay off in the end, though, I would say, with heavier casualties there for Bulat. We also got a demo charge here by the house. Sneaky. Ooh. That's nasty. Definitely punishing for now and there. And certainly would say compensating for the losses. We can actually grab a machine gun, and then it did pan out, though. Didn't make a lot of progress fast and of course means Bulat is still getting a lot of fuel in fact Bulat is taking his chance to take up very good very good punching from the fuel point in the south there punches are rattling the sappers the Sturmgewehrs rattling off lead and death at 40 million head officers want to take out that AC map fleet back here troops enforcing we'll have to see what Phenomenon does next because the garage trap for say a far center Cromwell or might he actually try and say uh, stall for a comet now oh that's actually getting very close to the demo charge there. Glider down. And we got a sword out from Van Arman. Gives his men a nice offensive boost here. Versus Harry Hun. I mean, it's basically very neat assault, except they still get sprint and you also get air reconnaissance. Yeah. Gonna lose this now moving about. Gonna lose squat their half health. Got a deep flank here going in. Gonna lose in the way. Pack 40 also in the way. There goes Snow Ching. Clearly aiming to take out the sniper of the assault. Command, of course, charging in there as well. Can probably host down some good damage. Basically outmaneuvering Bulat's northern thrust and then setting up an attack here from the north as well. At the same time, though, Bulat is counter attacking the southward. It's basically punishing for now and then having forces there. Both players looking to hit the other one in the soft spots. Take up still not happening there for Bulat. That could easily prove to be a disaster of the moment when Fanon hits some tanks. A seeming about them shape for the Grenadiers up close, doing some good damage. Hitting car points, hitting resource points. Pack 40 in the move straight into the section. There, guards look called in. Basically makes it hard for them to use that machine gun and for that matter, move troops and the equipment through to the area. Clever there by Fun Ivan. In fact, there's a chance they're going to just quickly get wiped out with a bit of bad luck. Or those kind of for that matter. Ooh, close one there. Instead of him losing some discernment to the artillery. Still quite close there. Southern harassment continues to be quite effective there for Blood versus Fanarman, clearly not anticipating it. He is closing in on the tanks, but the harassment again has slowed down the tanks, but there go demo charge almost wiped out the Panzer Grenadiers. Really lucky there for Bulat, that is two units that pretty much should have died, yet managed to pull through. That is really lucky there for Bulat. Really lucky for Bulat. As he then gets to still maintain five in the score to us for Ivan. Pioneer's Rally got the Panzers moving up here to engage the sappers in the sections. Still no take up for Bulat. Oh, there we go. Finally, at the 14 minute mark, please have that going much sooner. Maybe rush out a far screw Austin here versus Van uh, Ivan. At this point, it might have better just to stick to Stugs of the Panzer Force since Van Ivan's obviously going to hit him with a tank. 
soonish. Commanders there, Valiant defending the fuel pond there, pushing back the Huns and wiping them out. The full gun of the EYP. The silenced M guns proving to be quite formidable. Fun fact the British had numerous silenced weapons, that was also known as the Delal Carbine, which was also really silent. In fact, I think there's some of the early sort of this. There's some of the stats for the commander sector is a reference to the live carbon in game, but they never added it, I guess, in the end. But it's a little fun note there. Commanders they've routed. We got key for the fusion of the Panzers. I'm yeah, slightly disappointed in that. I think should have just kept without. But here we are. And we got another valiant assault. Oh, not valiant assault. We got another assault. It's, it's, you know, they're both assaults. It's just the German one gets to be valiant. That's, of course, for the British. It's not. Despite at this point, it is better by far. And with section charging ahead, you're going straight for the Grenadiers, pushing them back, crumbling away there for Fun Ivan. So Paul McCarp there, and we got get Bunker landing on the section, not doing too much damage into the heavy cover. Almost got the Panzer Grenadiers going for the car point of Fun Ivan. Straight to the German Vickers, so pressing the section. Of course, got the sniper there with 24 kills. I would say at this point, the sniper has more than this. Earned himself in. Probably almost done. Two reinforcing healing and no weapon racks. Well, grenades there for Fun Ivan. I think either of those two should be considered for him. Would do him a lot of good. Cromwell out. Point. Big two points wise, it's 375 versus 396. Pretty close. Cromwell Mark for sitting out there for Fun Ivan. Gonna just will need to retreat soon. And may I go Balak going for the Panzer Fort. Standard choice of most of our players. Damned enemies trying to take a point from us. Cromwell's heading out. But not too far are they? AC falling back in the north as well. Panzer almost done there for Bullard and the second Panzer Edition. In fact, second Panzer Edition by the time of fighting the Normandy only had Panzer Force. It never received its Panzer Battalion in time. Instead, received the, its Panzer Battalion from a. Uh... No, wait, it actually had a Panzer Battalion. It had to give it up to the 21st Panzer Division and then received in return a Panzer Battalion from the 1 and 16th Panzer Division. I always slightly messed that one up. I'll wait, Panzer Vart there for Bullard. Panzer Kampfang Fear. Moving straight ahead. Six pound gun on the way there for Fun Ivan. Find that the Cromwell. Shots fired. Panzer 4 falling back. Panzer was there for flanking up behind the Sabbath, pushing them back. Up north, a bit of pressure here from Fun Ivan trying to defend the fuel point there. Panzer is obviously for that. Any anti tank weapons cannot defend at all. There's the AC. Very quick retreat there as Pilat realizes that's a waste. Glider explodes further. And there you go. Six pounder gun out for Fanon. Provides him with additional anti tank support here versus Pilat's Panzer Waffe. Which could very quickly end up being necessary. In particular, if Pilat decides to back up his Panzer with Stoogs. AC shoots, misses. At least fails to penetrate the Panzer Force Front's armor. Good hit there from the Panzer Force. AC bounces again. The staff coming in against the Panzer they're pushing them back. Oh, bit of a loss there for Fanon. Sap is taken out by the Gunnadiers. That's going to hurt his ability to repair his tanks. Also, there was only Minesweeper squad, so if he doesn't replace those Minesweepers, that could also you know, give a lot more incentive to lay down mines. Then as they're gaining the ace level. Let's we'll see what Fanon aims for next here versus Bullard. And for that matter, what Bullard aims for. Center victory point being guided by the commanders. We got 326 to 389. Fanon's building up his victory point lead here further and further versus Bullard. Back here, not much else going on. No weapon racks, grenades, or say attempted comets or Churchills. Another value assault. He's really putting a lot of into that. Very rare to see that from a player, but again, it is a good ability. It is a very good ability. 
overall a lot of these abilities where you get like a nice accuracy boost to your troops is are generally pretty good like even then it either you know gives you sprint or ability to grab points fast and the case of course of vanity assault nothing else I mean, these are good abilities, but they do tend to feel like get a bit overlooked. They do have a tendency of getting a bit overlooked. A point is being overlooked. Which I feel like is unfortunate. Panther 4 here, slowly advancing. AC transfer still up. Centerwards. And the escort halted. Commander still waiting out. I mean, right now, I mean, Bullard's southern flank is slightly open. I mean, a good push. You could probably do some good damage. You could combine with, say, a smoke raid operation or more to cover. And come. Yeah, that could have gone, I think, slightly better in terms of execution. I mean, the idea is nice, but he lacked a bit more and a bit more speed there for it. Another Krom there for Phenomen, so no Comets, no Churchills. No premium mediums. But this can't hear these. Quick light gun bomb there. Shot fired. Krom was slowly on the way there for Phenomen. And more pioneers for blood. Can these punches moving in? Direct hit on the Cromwell. Now the Cromwell almost down there for Van Ivan. Commanders moving in. They're going to be punches something up inside the church. Commander setting up for a bit of flank there, but they're taking damage. And that's going to be supposed to be for the entertain gun. For now, I'm saying Cromwell almost done. Bullock could go for another Panzer IV here. Himself, he could go for Stukes. He could go for Ospins. I suppose we'll try and stall for a Tiger tank here. I'm not so sure I'd recommend that. And there we go. Another Banner Assault here for now. He launches a counter attack here to sweep away the Jerry's, the Huns. It's Operation Ballyho. And yes, fun fact, there are actually concerns about the way the British were actually naming the operations. So at some point, I believe it was Churchill telling them to act out with more serious names because he'd really have to, have to tell someone's mother that, you know, their child, their son died doing again Operation Tallywhacker or Pimple Pop or whatever. Of course, I'm not under such restrictions, so I'll more than happily give any British operational name something really silly naming. Pioneers routed, Panther Force sending out. More samples on the way for Phenomen as the section makes a not too fond encounter here with the Panzer IV. A quick retreat in the face of the Panzer Kampfwagen Fear. And we do get tier 4 there for Bullard. Probably going to be a setup there for the Tiger Tank. What is most players about? Like, go for it, they go for tier 4. Less interested in what is in the Heavy Panzer IV than they're just interested in the Tiger Tank, which honestly performs better than both Panther and the Schrum Panzer. On a more average level, I mean, it's not quite as effective as the Sturm Panzer murdering infantry as get a fighting tanks as the Panther, but like for the same package, you're still you're getting something that overall provides a much more sort of flexible utilitarian package than the either of them. So, usually, why you don't see a lot of them? Plus, I mean, both Panther and Sturm Panzer aren't that great on their own, anyways, at the moment, as I've already made a video on. Chrome there with seven kills, bit of quiet here. Again, less of a high octane fight at times, and there you go, quick strike there. Panther faster damage than the Chrome ult. Sabers are nearby, and certainly would have been more risky not to rush it in like that if he didn't have Sabers nearby, since, you know, in this case, Bullock could theoretically then rush the Chrome and take it out. And there you go, another Valiant Salt here from Van Island. Operation Purple Christmas Tree has begun. Gonna be sending Southfords. Looking to claim, claim that centre victory point. Taking those Gundies in the south. Landing quite a few hits there. Chrome could also be quickly joining in there. Half eight to actually two. Panther charging trains to the section. Chrome moving forwards. Anti tank guns could also try to support a bit better. Chrome almost good to go in the south. And the Panther quickly falls back here. Trying to stay out of the uh, Lanana 5 most of the Fanarin's armor. There goes section pushing further ahead. Catching the sniper there. Oh my. Almost became a. Uh... Oh, there you go. Casualty of Operation Purple Christmas Tree. A dashing blow there. Chrome charging. Heady charging. We know what? 
barely avoiding the Telamine. Panzer Fall there, immobilized. Oh my god, that is really bad news there for Bulat. His Panzer Fall is toast. But he might be able to take out the Kromlau with a pack 40. And there you go, Veterans 1 game. Let's get the other Kromlau there. Pack 40 in a bit of a tight spot. Infantry should be getting into support, but they can't easily do to the Vickers machine in the way. Up north, no further infantry support. We got Telemines being laid down there by Bulat as well. Very good. Almost got the pack 40 here. Almost. Pack 40 down to just two men, less than half health. M support though is nowhere near to be seen. In fact, most of Fanami's infantry is now completely on the run. If not dead. And there you go, pack down. End up parking it right next to the telemine. Once more, very close to the telemine there, but uh, not quite there. We got the target tank on the way there for. We'll light in a few moments. Shira Panzer. Inbound. Pani is routed. Basically, I think try and strike hit for in space of force for now to have to deal with it with his tanks. Maybe try and draw away front forces from the front line. Panzer Gunner is though in bit of trouble with Cromwell. Quickly lining up for some kills in the tree. And there you go. Tiger tank out here for Vulat and the second Panzer is shown. Immediately adding the pins about machine as well. Could try and grab that pack 14, turn it against. Oh, there we go. Telemar went off. And with the target tank inbound, this is a big problem for Fanaim, and that is a very big problem. In particular with the Realm Explosion, and obviously the target tank's gonna have a pretty good chance of penetrating the Cromwell head on, but like. If the rest needs to be a tiny chance the shots could bounce with this, yeah. No chance in hell, and the Cromwell's down. Pretty much getting Balat now the arm advantage with a big fat Tiger tank. Got the pack 40 up north, but his six pounder gun crew is very much pushed off this mortal coil by the Tiger tank. Four kills so far. It may not be Michael Bittman, but when the Tommies don't have enough anti tank weapons, you don't need to be Michael Bittman, you just need to be there in a Tiger tank. Troops have been forcing. Panzer Gunner is pushing forwards there. 12 kills, slowly approaching Metz 3. We're losing a capture point. Fixing up the Tiger tank. Bit of quiet there. By late war standards, the average Panzer Grenadier squad and Grenadier squad have been a 10 man unit. Though paper was a bit more difficult to uphold and more commonly was actually more roughly eight man so I mean two Panzer Grenadier squads and two Grenadier squads in come two would have roughly represented an actual Grenadier Panzer Grenadier squad. Little fun fact there. Section hit straight for the Panzer Grenadier. Quickly routing them. Of North East moving in. There you go another operation there from Van Ivan. Operation Let Zeppelin. Setting out there with his forces. Panzer they Quickly suffering casualties in the face of the AC Mark III, and of course, lacking any handy anti tank weapons. He does have one Stuka close air support ready to ruin Phenomenon State from above. Krom there moving forwards. Eh, with a Tiger tank about, and only one anti tank. I'm not entirely sure the Krom was the best pick here. Might want to go for a Firefly, to be honest. Or something else here versus Blood. Or he could, of course, just hope to immobilize the Tiger tank and destroy it. I mean. That's a way of doing it as well. And we got the air support inbound here. I'm guessing he might be trying to park the crumb so close to the air support. Might act to hit the Tiger Tank as well. That will increase his chance of taking out the Tiger Tank. Ooh. Didn't quite pan out there. Didn't quite pan out. Close, I suppose, here for Van Ivan. But in the end, the gamble didn't quite pay off there. And Bullard's Tiger Tank swoops away to uh, avoid total and utter annihilation at the British anti-tank forces. Crom there, the meanwhile grows thrashing straight into the Vickers and quickly getting hosed down. That Vickers has been a really great uh, rat there for Balat, to be honest. Really beginning for Ivan a very tough time. Halfway there to the ace level there for the Panzer Grenadier. Section versus other Panzer Grenadier squad still not confirmed going in the base. We got another Crom there for Von Ivan. Got 
Got up closely with the Panzer Grenadier, forcing a section retreat there. The G43 singing a deadly dirge. Crumb slowly approaching. Phenomenal right now is in a bit in tatter situation. I mean, he's lost a lot of forces, but the advantage he has is slowly dwindling away like dew before the sun. And, like, Bulat now has more infantry. He's got a heavy tank. He's got a good amount of support weapons. Like, he's got the Vickers. So, Phenomenal's chances right now are looking pretty tough. Pretty tough. I'd not say it's impossible. I mean, if he pulls some sort of brilliant maneuver and completely throws Bulat off guard, there's a chance he could still, you know, grab victory here. But if he doesn't, I mean, Bolat, I would say, in this situation, he might be able just to smother Van Ivan. So, well, not impossible. It's going to require some absolutely brilliant maneuvers here from Van Ivan. Which would like him to involve a sudden quick thrust into the north, somehow getting back the Vickers, and then further sort of rushing up behind some Bolat's force and destroying them. Also, I think something a bit in the Cromwell. Titan going in. Pack 40 is in theory to support if you can get it close enough. Sabbath fixing up the AC Mark 3. Tag tank there with both 7 kills. Which is one. We've got a Panther 4 pulling up people for blood. To back up his Tiger. Very solid pick there. Gives him a nice flexible response. Though, I mean, arguably, he could just go for a uh, Osman instead and just try and uh, murder out for now his infantry harder. Commanders are taking a shattering hit here from the target tank. Eight kills, pack four lands a good hit, gaining target weak point. Again, somehow, you know, catch a target tank in a good spot there, there's a chance. Pioneers wiped, a tiny loss here for Bullard. He's still got a large force, he still has another Pioneers ward even, so even there, it's not a big loss to the target tank, and he's already replacing the lost Pioneers, very good. But then right now, it's just back to a small strip of land, and Germans holding the rest. Northern point sees here, sandbags being prepared to withstand any German counterattack. And Bullard immediately counterattacks. We're going to use the Panzer on the machine gun. Now I'm in an Oasis here versus Van Ivan. He's immediately sent packing. AC here backing off from the Panzer IV, landing a decent hit there with its 75 minute gun. Another hit there from the Panzer IV. Got most of the close air support ready here for Bulat, and they got almost got the AC Mark III, but it does escape. Bulat does not pursue. Possibly worried about mines or other surprises that could be hiding in the terrain. And then the other valiant assault from Van Ivan. Operation Candy Floss Unicorn is a go. Cromwell charging ahead yet. The Pentagon it is in the south. Send them running. Pack 40 seconds moving up. Commandos charging ahead here. Sure of their victory against those dastardly Huns. Ooh, pack shot bounces. Cromwell shot bounces as well. Their Tiger Tiger armor just bounces. And there you go. Third shot to the chime. Pierces through the Tiger Tank's heavy armor. Bang. Grenade. They almost takes out the Commandos. We got 172 versus 203. Looks like Operation Candy Floss Unicorn. Candy Floss Unicorn did not quite pan out here in the end. Gully is almost about to go with the Cromwell. Great hit here from the Pack 40 on the com Cromwell. Another six pounder gun here for Fernando to increase the amount of firepower I can bring to bear versus the Tiger Tank. Quick rough nade. Ultimately dodged there by Fernando neatly. Tiger tank about ready to go there for blood and Deutschland once more. Phenomen continues to bleed out victory points. Six pounder anti tank gun finished. Got the almost ace little pack 48 to receive any set from the tank for the south, Pantone from the north. Six pounder gun good to go as well. Tiger tank moves ahead. Strange to line of fire the pack 40. There we go. Piercing hit through the side arm of the tiger tank. Another hit. Another bounce. In fact. Cromwell AC moving in. That's going to try and take out the tiger tank. Looks like for now it might actually be bottle or ton visioning there on the uh, tiger tank a bit. Not. He's done 120 versus Bullock 23. Is there something for now he could do to like 10 in the situation? That probably is. 
The question is, can Phenomen see it? I mean, I can't, but just because I can't see something doesn't mean it doesn't exist. Tag weak point here, ready to try and, you know, deliver a uh, standing blow to the Titan Commander for the southern point. Got the EC moving in. Got to try and immobilize it. Got air support called in. Tag tank though down to less than half health. Might have a shot here. Ace level pack 40. That definitely gives him a good chance of destroying it. The problem is, even if he gets it, there's still the air support. He still needs to get the armor out of there. And he's also done 103 points. He's also lost his commanders. They finally perished. They fought their best, but in the end, eh, not enough. Nice raising in here to that space. I guess a finishing attempt here, maybe. Or just a. Gesture of defiance against Bullard. As most of the map is always falling into German hands once more. 86 points left. Rolling in with a pencil here versus Phenomen Space. 77 points left. Phenomen's at the end of two sections. More commanders called in. There we go, main gun on the Cromwell. Pack 40 there. Close to 22. There we go, Cromwell down. Makes by coming the Northern Victory. Ponce ends up landing in front of the Vickers. That pretty much post ups the commanders and it was there. AC map fleet down in Bannon Titan base. And yup, commanders landing right in front of the Vickers to immediately be suppressed. And immediately losing poor Lawrence's life. And Timmy follows after. <laughs> Well, that I think it's safe to say GG. Phenomenon's efforts have spatted out like a candle in a storm. So GG, game over here. Nice little fight with Commanders vs. Lightning War. Not the most typical fights here, but certainly had some good moments. And then I feel like Phenomenon made some tactical mistakes strategically as well. Could have made up some more mines, I think, here and there. But I also feel like he should just pushed for Comets or made brought up a Firefly at some point here versus Bullard. Friend guns or grenades would also be a good option. There was overall a lot of options you could have picked, but in the end, he never quite picked them, and I feel like they just gave Bullard slowly and steadily the initiative line sort of slowly wear down for Ivan. But there you go. Hope you enjoyed this match. Hope you learned something from it. If you did subscribe, like, share, comment on the channel, friends, channel, family, but don't share your enemies. This is Imperial Links and Cheers. Thank you for watching. Hope you'll see you tomorrow again for another exciting episode. Bye.